Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to be doing a 10 minute painting challenge and my goal is to complete a watercolour painting of a seascape working outdoors. As usual I'll be using mixed media paper, watercolour paints and you can see I've got an initial painting drawing. But this 10 minute challenge is a little bit different to usual. So normally, so for example in the past I might have done 10 minute painting challenge of a cow. So here's a little clip of a 10 minute painting of a belted galloway I did recently. And normally I just do those for fun, but there's a little bit of a story behind the seascape challenge. So a couple of weeks back I was up at a place called the Valley of the Rocks, which is this amazing valley with these incredible rocky outcrops right on the edge of a cliff on the coast of North Devon. It's around about an hour and a half away from where I live in Exeter. And my first thought was, you know, this, is, this landscape and seascape is just amazing. It was a beautiful sunny day and I kind of settled in this spot here on the rocks and I started to paint the view in watercolour here, or, you know, that you can see here. It doesn't really come across on camera but it was so hot I couldn't cope <laughs> with sitting on the rocks. And we noticed a load of people just kind of disappearing over the edge of the cliff, just walking off somewhere and not coming back. So we walked to the edge of the cliff and discovered this incredible secret beach, which because of the high cliffs surrounding it, unless you know it's there and you're right at the edge of the cliff, you know, you, you wouldn't know it was there at all. Now, as you can see, the path down to the beach is... Precarious is an understatement, okay, so apparently it used to be a lot better. Um, and, you know, as beautiful as the surroundings are, as you can see, my mind and my eyes were very much on the ground going down this path. This is the path here, so it's basically rocks, rubble, pebbles, sand, earth. So it's much more, it doesn't really come across on camera, but it's much more like rock climbing getting down there than it is walking. But anyway... Apart from, you know, surveying the beautiful countryside and the beautiful water and the goal, which was the shingle beach at the bottom of the cliff. Um, finally, yeah, most of, the, most of my concentration is on getting down that path, but I got down to the beach, found this little alcove in the rocks, set up my easel, my little field easel on a big rock there, and I thought, okay, right, this is the scene. I mean, look how beautiful that is, waves crashing in, high cliffs, greenery on top. There's a few people on the beach to, for a bit of interest. So I started working in watercolour, but I fell into the trap of kind of, kind of painting in watercolour in the way I might do with acrylic. And of course, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But as I got more and more into the painting, I hadn't been working that long at this stage, but you can see I'm starting to do multiple layers of watercolour. I'm starting to fiddle. I'm doing small brush strokes with a small brush. And it's kind of a little heavy handed. So I thought, okay, how, how can I fix this? I've, I've had two attempts now at painting. I want to get something done. So I thought, well, what I could do is use the 10 minute challenge technique, but for a different reason. So by giving myself the 10 minute deadline, it's going to force me to look at the big shapes, force me to be bold with my brushwork, force me to be bold with my color and tone choices, and just get something done without getting caught up in the detail like I did with that previous painting I just showed you. So pencil drawing done, and as you can see I'm coming with a big mop brush and just a wash of ultramarine blue for the sky. And I swept that across the cliffs as well, because those cliffs are pretty dark, so the blue's gonna help me darken that area. And now I come in with you know, a deeper blue. So I've got a little bit of cobalt blue in here and some of the ultramarine blue as well. And I'm putting that on heavier because the water is in general darker than the sky. But there are highlights of you know, sparkling light on the water. So you can see what I'm doing here is just sweeping the brush across the, the paper very quickly so I get a bit of dry brush effect. And I'm also lifting off some of that paint with a paper towel as well. So my plan is to keep some of the lift off but also leave some of the white paper exposed under the dry brush I'm putting down now with the darker colour again. So it's tempting when looking at water, you've got the waves crashing in, and there's all these incredible ripples and reflections and things. So I'm trying to keep things 
as simple in terms of brush strokes as possible, just areas of tone and texture with a little bit of white paper still exposed. And you can see I'm layering one blue on top of the other as well. So I've got my sky in, I've got some indication of the water. Next I switch to the cliff face. So I've got some burnt umber in here, some alizarin crimson. And I'm just trying to put on, it's, it's a hot enough day that the underlying blue wash is completely dry. So I'm just putting on a nice clean wash, varying the colour a little bit as I go back to the palette. But a nice clean wash, but with different direction brush strokes over all of that cliff face. Now there are some quite large rocks at the water's edge at the base of the cliff on the left. But for, the, for now I'm just kind of filling those in and you know, the same with the kind of rocky outcrop that I'm working on right now off to the far right. The main thing is just to get that blocked in as a general tonal area but with a slightly different texture to the water. So the brush strokes for the water were horizontal. For the rocks and the cliffs they're going in all directions. But when I come down to the beach I'm sweeping my brush down towards the shore. Similar colour to before just keeping the treatment pure, simple, clean wash. No detail at all really. Now I've deliberately left the edge of that sand wash jagged because I'm hoping that's going to help me describe the, the water rolling in up the beach later on. I still need to go darker with the cliffs so I'm adding a more purpley dark brown, possibly a little bit of neutral tint in there very wet on the still damp cliff face and you can see I'm just patting the brush so that as the water runs down, as the wash moves around on the paper I get the lovely texture and the pencil mark I've put in for the base of the cliff that's actually catching that bead of the wash along the bottom of the cliff edge so that wasn't deliberate but it's kind of it's kind of nice that it's happened because you know that's going to help define the bottom of the cliff in a way that I could never paint by hand the only problem is as you can see the end of that bead is welling up and it's kind of trickling down the page so I'm having to mop that up with a paper towel intermittently but you know I can live with that, that's okay. All right, and in fact you know it's kind of adding a little something to the water. So you know this 10 minute challenge is forcing me to prioritise you know what can I get done in a clean efficient way. So that's, that's the whole idea. So I'm continuing to add texture on the left of the cliff. Uh, you know, I can't speak highly enough about the location, actually. You know, talk about beautiful, talk about secluded, talk about, you know, sunny, warm, a cacophony of noise with the waves crashing in on the shingle beach, pebbles being dragged around. It really was, you know, an incredible day. Now you can see that bead of, of wash on the bottom of the cliffs that's continuing to, to break free and kind of move down across the, the painting. And I haven't, I haven't quite noticed, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm looking at the rocks on the left. There are some kind of greenish highlights subdued. So I'm not really drawing those rocks as such yet, apart from the, the initial pencil work. Just kind of sweeping in subdued highlights on the left. And also that there, there is some grass kind of tumbling down the cliff face as well, or plant life too. So picking up that that drip, that's lifted off some of the water, but it's a random enough mark that, that that's okay. So away from the big mop brush now, I've switched to a smaller round synthetic brush with a nice fine point. And I'm coming in with a, a dark blue, mostly ultramarine, but with a bit of uh, burnt umber in there. And many of those rocks off in the distance, they're really quite dark in, in shadow, the faces of the rocks that are in shadow. And so what I'm doing is copying them reasonably well but also adding my own random twists. I'm not counting the number of boulders that are there. I'm just trying to put enough in to indicate the sense of scale of these rocks and boulders relative to the cliff face. And what I'm doing is leaving some areas exposed so that the underlying greenish brownish wash is showing through and they'll form the highlight areas for that group of boulders. Now a few just gentle soft marks on the dry wash for the sand on the beach to indicate perhaps footprints or just little divots in the, in the beach and a little bit of dry brush, same kind of idea, just some random dark depression marks 
but trying not to make them too regularly spaced. We want them to look random and natural. Now for the white water coming in, I'm not going to try and draw that in any way. You can see I'm just scumbling across kind of a slightly purple, but mostly kind of grey shadow for the underside of the white water. So with the sunlight coming down from above, the white water is at its whitest uh, on top, but there are some subdued soft shadows underneath that white water. Now the, the main figure on the beach, I'm going to treat very simply, pretty much as a silhouette because he's backlit. Um, so I haven't gone for pure black here or anything like that, it's just a very dark purple, kind of purpley brown. So just filling that drawing that I did reasonably precisely with the pencil in. Went a little bit wrong with the brush, but it, it's enough to give the right impression of a figure there. Or it will be, you know, when it's, when it's completely finished. The cast shadow of that figure on the beach really helps to anchor the, the person's feet to the ground. And again, it's just a reasonably non-detailed treatment. It's just enough. You know, you've got to get the angle right and the general shape right, but it just has to be enough to make, make you feel, oh, that's the shadow being cast by the person. Some long blue shorts. And that person has started to come to life and he's starting to look as if he's being lit by the sun and the shadow's being cast on the beach. Now, there were a few people swimming in the water and when they were off in the water you can only see the head and shoulders and because they're off in the distance and because of the strong sun coming more or less directly at us they're pretty much in silhouette so again I've gone pretty dark with them and just enough to indicate their presence it helps to give a sense of depth and a sense of scale to the entire painting back to the water but now this time with a flat brush and a randomized dry brush technique in a darker browny purple which I'm dragging up along the beach in selective places to indicate wet sand and the original random line of brushwork was just darker shadow under that white water. Notice I've varied the treatment. I've kept a little bit of dry brush as we've come up the beach but also converted to kind of a wet dilute wash as well and carried that over both the unpainted area and up the sandy beach too. So in general including a little bit of randomness in our work is a good way to make things look natural. Now I need to enhance the sense of light on top of the white water but I, I mustn't go too crazy so I'm just putting in a darker purple here next to the white water just to make it pop a little bit more but I'm being really careful I, I don't want to overwork this painting that's the whole point 10 minutes can I get it done in time that's the question. So. Let me show you a little bit more of the beach. Look how you know, beautiful this is. Uh, crystal clear blue water, uh, pebble shingle beach. Just another little shot of my painting location. I mean, it's just a dream, really. So here's, here's the actual scene again. People on the beach, waves crashing in, and dark cliffs. And let's see how my painting compares to the scene. Have I got it right? Have I done enough? Let's take a look. So there's my painting. And if we look at the scene, it's not bad. Strictly speaking, the cliffs should be much darker than they are. But I elected to leave it just like that to keep everything clean and pure. And I'm really happy with the finished painting. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.